Good morning, everyone. Today's Smart Knowledge You podcast is going to be about the recent admission by Deutsche Bank bankers that they manipulated gold and silver prices for years. So before I get started, I wanted to show you a short film clip from the movie Take Shelter. So I'll be back right after this. I said yes! Sleep well in your beds, because if this thing comes true, there ain't gonna be any more. So the reason I wanted to show you that short clip from Take Shelter with Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain was because this has been often how I felt about the charlatans in the gold and silver world that have been ridiculing people that claim price manipulation was happening over the years. So I've gone back and actually I'll put uh, links to the articles that I've written for years and years and years trying to call out the banking cartel that's been manipulating gold and silver prices. Um, and I'll start with a 2008 article that I wrote. So this was eight, nine years ago to Commissioner Bart Chilton, Chilton of the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, in which I sent him data uh, regarding a lot of waterfall price declines in New York. The very first, I would say like half hour, and sometimes even within 10 minutes of the open in New York of the gold futures market. So I questioned the, you know, what was going on there because it certainly was not free market behavior. If you broke it down into even um, smaller time periods as, as was provided by Nanex and you looked at the trading that was going on in the gold futures market, you could see clear step down patterns that were initiated by bankers using high frequency trading algorithms because these step down patterns were not uh, indicative of any type of free market trading by the wildest definition of free market trading. So uh, I will put a link to that article so you could check that out. And um, I will also provide a link to an article I wrote about the fraudulent nature of the GLD and SLV and that I questioned the legitimacy of these vehicles that were uh, run by custodians HSBC and JP Morgan that were claiming that there was 100% backing of physical gold and physical silver for all the billions of dollars pouring into those two paper, paper ETS while my contention was that there was no evidence that these were 100% backed uh, gold and silver vehicles but they were more fractional fractionally reserved back uh, gold and silver vehicles because no one basically had access to the vaults in which they were kept and sometimes they, uh, the original prospectuses even claimed that the gold that was backing paper ETFs could even be sourced out and kept by third party vaults and then so there was just a whole layer upon layer upon layer and then no one was actually able to even prove that that gold was there because no one was uh, given access to these vaults uh, to check the legitimacy 
of these two vehicles. So I was basically telling people to stay away because if they're buying these as a proxy for gold and silver, first of all, there's no paper gold and silver that's ever a proxy for physical gold and physical silver. Physical gold and physical silver is the only thing that people should buy if they're looking to invest in gold bullion or gold coins and they should take delivery of it whenever possible to 100% ensure that it's in their possession because if they buy gold and silver, even if they have contracts to buy physical gold with a bank and they're buying it within a banking system, it is not safe when it is in banker hands. And this has been proven time and time again. Lastly, it is my contention that bankers have always used the fiat currency proceeds that pour into their fake gold and fake silver vehicles, GLD and SLV, to actually short gold and silver in the gold and silver futures market. So if you know anyone that thinks they're investing in gold by buying the GLD and SLV, please, and they actually want the price to go up, please tell them they're actually shooting themselves in the foot as well as harming every other gold and silver investor out there because they're giving money to the bankers to help them short gold and silver to keep the price down. So when we go back to that that clip I showed you of Take Shelter, I've often felt like that character Michael Shannon in trying to fight the charlatans in the gold world that deny that there have been any price suppression schemes going on by bankers and that tried to ridicule those of us that were telling the truth. But now that basically Deutsche Bank bankers have admitted that this has been going on, we know that those people in the gold uh, and silver blogosphere that have denied this were the liars. So uh, I'll put the links to the articles as well in which Deutsche Bank bankers admitted to suppressing gold prices. And in fact, not only did they admit, but they also agreed as part of their settlement in court to quote provide cooperation to plaintiffs including the production of instant messages as part of the settlement end quote so in other words they're going to also reveal at least they say they are because uh, a lot of these judgments against these banks in which they admit their guilt in rigging prices it often amounts to just a slap on the hand and uh you know the only thing that really would be acceptable is that deutsche bank bankers go to jail for many, many years. So, you know, the people in the public should not accept uh, just some type of uh, cursory fine for Deutsche Bank destroying gold and silver uh, free market pricing for years and years and years. That should be totally, absolutely unacceptable to the public. And we should not accept anything less than Deutsche Bankers being put in jail for this. But I doubt, highly doubt that that will be the result of their mission to price suppressing gold and they said they're going to name their co-conspirators and other banks and uh, you know even that I take with a grain of salt because especially if JP Morgan because Deutsche Bank has also admitted to rigging prices of silver so if JP Morgan is not co-conspirators they're not being honest or they worked out some kind of deal where they don't have to be completely honest so you know people like Blythe Masters uh, you know, if it could be proven she had a hand in rigging silver prices. And I think if Deutsche Bank really is going to be honest and they turn over all that evidence to the courts as they say they would, electronic communications, that will be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. So Blythe Masters is not mentioned in any of these communications. Again, we know that they're not really being upfront with what they're intended for the judge's approval later. And they will contemplate a monetary payment, which, <laughs> which I'm sure will be not to the satisfaction of the people that were basically scammed and defrauded by Deutsche Bank bankers. So, and again, there'll be both a settlement, a monetary settlement supposedly, and the gold price rigging and silver price rigging. But as I said, we should accept nothing less than Deutsche Bank bankers and every other banker that has been exposed for rigging gold and silver prices to be sent away uh, for to jail without the possibility of parole for a minimum of 10 years. That's the only way that you're going to stop this. So if it's just some real cursory, uh, basically agreement that's not going to deter this kind of criminal behavior as just has happened with Goldman Sachs bankers, then really this is really no news other than the fact that they omitted it because there's no progress being made in the fact that this type of behavior is going to be deterred in the future. So, um, 
But the one thing I, I say that we can take away from all this is that the people in the there are very prominent people in the gold and silver blogosphere that have been ridiculing those of us that have been claiming price manipulation has been happening for years and years, which is yours truly since 2008, 2007. We shouldn't give these people a pass. We need to know what their ulterior motive for denying price manipulation has been in the past. Because as I said, uh, I certainly said that they've suppressed price and the evidence has been overwhelming. It's been uh, provided by uh, such people that I pay respect to like Ted Butler and Gata, of course. And um, also re numerous data released by Nanex shows, uh, like I said, uh, how bankers have used high frequency trading algorithms in their futures markets to step down price, uh, how they have unloaded $1.2 billion in notional gold futures in just uh, 10 to 30 minutes to slam the gold price, which would ensure the worst possible price for the sale of those futures, which no one would do other, you know, other than if their intention were to slam the gold price because no seller wants to ensure the worst possible price, which unloading $1.2 billion in notional gold futures would obviously do, would, would ensure the worst possible price for the sale of those futures. So all these things, and this is just a tip of the iceberg of the evidence that is out there. So these intelligent people and their they are intelligent people that have ridiculed and expressed disdain for those of us that were trying to uh, show the truth of price manipulation and gold and silver, both downward, majority of the time downward, but at times I have said also that they manipulated it upwards, which is also true. But we know need to know what was going on because there's only two possibilities here because they're intelligent people in the gold community community that ridiculed us for years for, for saying now what Deutsche Bank bankers have admitted is truth in court. And so these people are instrumental in stopping truth from getting out there. So now that's been proven, we need to call them out. We need to email them. We need to flood them. We need to press them for an answer until they provide an answer. What was their motive for doing so? What were their ulterior motives for obscuring the truth? Because as I said, there's only two possibilities. One, they're a moron for ignoring the amount of evidence the tip of which I just described to you, which any reasonable person that, that has half a brain cell could see that the price was being manipulated downward for most of the time by bankers, or they had an ulterior motive. So what was their ulterior motive? That's what we really need to, uh, to get to the bottom of. It. What was their ulterior motive? So like I said, this is going to be short and sweet. I'll put the links to all the articles below, the links to Deutsche Bank Banker articles admitting their guilt in suppressing the price of gold and silver. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of hope for any type of real punishment being doled out to these bankers because anything less than jail time and long jail time should be unacceptable to the public, but I doubt we're going to get that. Um, even as we are in the midst of a big gold and silver upturn right now. Again, like we said, there's still manipulation going on there because gold and silver should not, you know, be going down as it has been uh, since gold hit 1280s or it hit, it went down to like 1220 something yesterday. So that's a $60 sell-off, uh, 1223 it went down to. It silver went below 16 yesterday uh, for a period of time. So again, you know, this manipulation is still going on and, um, Again, just write your comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe also to our YouTube channel if you want to be informed of the next podcast or vlog that we're going to post, which we're going to keep going with these types of topics if these are of interest to you. Please do pass this on to, to people as well because I want to get a healthy discussion going on below. I want, I want to know what you think are, please tell me what are the reasons for why those so prominent in the gold community would have denied that there has been any type of banking cartel working against a free market price in gold and silver. Why would they deny that when it's been so obvious? Okay, thanks a lot for listening and as always remain intensely curious. So long.